For those of you doing the reduction reaction, you will be using, a, using sodium boral hydride as your reducing agent for converting your ketone, camphor, into your secondary alcohol, isoborneal. For reduction, there will be a hydrogenation of the carbonyl to form the alcohol. And although this reaction is exothermic, it will proceed very slowly. As you've seen before, in a 25 milliliter round bottom flask, we've added one gram of camphor. Then you'll add five milliliters of methanol to the camphor and agitate to dissolve. In portions, make sure you cautiously add 0.48 grams of sodium boral hydride to the solution. When all the sodium boral hydride is added, you'll reflux at the boiling point of methanol, which is about 70 to 80 degrees Celsius in a sand bath for 15 minutes. Once that 15 minutes is up, you will allow the mi reaction mixture to cool for 5 minutes. Now you will carefully add 12 milliliters of iced water. You will isolate the solid, the white solid, by removing the solvent with a Buckner funnel. Make sure that you're adding the 12 milliliters of ice water very carefully. You may need to scratch the inside of the flask in order to precipitate more crystals. As you can see, white precipitate has started to form. As we said before, you will then be filtering out your salt solid with a Buckner funnel. Make sure that you get complete transfer and rinse the inside of the round bottom flask with water. We're adding seven milliliters of diethyl ether. You want to make sure you use the wet ether found in the supply bottle in the dispense hood. Also, diethyl ether is extremely flammable, so make sure there are no flames or hot plates near the ether. When you add your 7 milliliters of diethyl ether, you will make sure that you're adding it extremely slowly to the beaker. The bottom layer that is formed is water. So in order to make sure that your product becomes dry, you need to pipette out the bottom layer. Now, you'll be adding three to four micro spatula, spatula fulls of magnesium sulfite or sodium sulfate to dry the solution. The adding of the anhydrous magnesium sulfite doesn't need to be exact. It's just there to dry the entire solution. And so shake this solution for five minutes to be sure that all the water is captured by the magnesium sulfide. Once the solution is dry, you will be filtering this into a collection flask using a cotton plug. For more information about this kind of filtration, refer to the chromatography videos. Then you will be using the rotovap to evaporate off the rest of the solvent. 
Once the rest of the solvent has been evaporated, you will be finding the melting point, which you can refer back to the videos based on melting point for more information about this. Regardless of whether you did the oxidation or reduction reaction, you will need to dry and weigh your product and calculate a percent yield. Also, you will both need to take a melting point of your final product.